Oop, I have just realized. Uh, and it seemed transition. No, no. All right, done. I don't want it. All right. Might as well jump into it. All right. I was hoping to get the stream parrot in uh, whilst I was live, and it looks like I can't. Okay. So give me two seconds. I am just, I've had another computer issue with my Linux box. Oh, I can't see it. All right, I was hoping to get Steam Parrot, uh, Stream Parrot up and running, but can't. All right, and let's also, that to about there all right sweet hopefully people can read the code oh you guys might be able to read that sorry about this i'm literally jumping this is on my mac so um bear with me uh, so yeah i was trying to fix this up as quickly as possible um let's go 16 20 That should be readable. Hopefully, hopefully. Do apologize if you can't read it. Um, if there's anything wrong with the stream, please do tell me uh, so I can fix it. I will, uh, if there's anything wrong, please tell me. New laptop, who dis? All right, let's get started. I realize I've got the Docker component um, open, I want to actually open up the code itself. So let's go this window. Let's go close. All right, straight off the bat, let's do a git pull. Let's also check GitHub. So today we'll be updating the admin UI UX. Uh, did I write any notes? Nope. All right. A Figma. Okay. I'm also getting chat up on here. Bear with me two seconds. Sorry, sweetie, didn't mean to scare you. All right, so today we're updating the UI UX. So we'll open up Figma, we'll log in. Um, that is with another account. Oh, I've got to log in with an EPH account. <clears throat> I don't know what that black bar is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. So, um, I think it was this one. Nope. Back to files. Pretty sure I did. <clears throat> not that one, not the branding colors. 
not the app. Not that one, not that one. Ah, there it is. All right, and then you got the group leader. Yeah, all right, cool. And hello, Eric55. Uh, so to um, quickly get you up to speed, uh, I'm just gonna zoom in, uh, zoom in. Oops, a bit more. So I've been building a um, project management system called Near Beach for a couple of years now. The idea is uh, you can have customers, Kanban boards, organizations, projects, requirement, uh, requests for change requirements and, new, and tasks in there. So tonight, what I want to actually do is, because this is an alpha, is I want to actually improve the administration part of it, specifically this section right here. Um, I'm Australian English, so I live in Melbourne. So, yeah. So, I've got the designs up. I forgot where I put the designs, and here they are, right here. So, I what I've got to do is transfer this design into here. And I'll zoom in here. Uh, this is not my normal streaming machine, so I do apologize. I'm my normal streaming machine didn't um, didn't boot up, so I'm using my Mac at the moment. <laughs> ah, fair enough. Um, I I enjoy the the problem solving of web development and stuff like that, and it's rather portable too. A lot of app applications have moved to. Um, well, web applications nowadays uh, because it's, you can use it on your phone and this and that. So yeah, he's going to school in Melbourne. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. I recently got a new job, which was awesome. Um, yeah, I've been in web dev for quite a while now. I've, I've had quite a lot of different jobs though. So yeah, anyway, we've got to make sure that the code on here is up to date. So I'm just closing all of this. All right, um, so git status. Okay, so we've got a couple of new files. Um, we edited quite a lot of the static files by the looks of it. And we are on a new branch. So, if you don't know what Git is, Git is used for source management. So, um, yeah, it's so uh, you don't lose track of your code and you can track changes and so forth like that. All right, uh, Git pull. All right, so what is this complaining about? Git add, Git commit. All right, so I've done something. Can I have? haven't pushed my changes yet. So git commit um, creation of a new branch. Okay, so I've got to set upstream origin development 0.29.1. I think it's because when I was on the plane, I forgot to actually pull my code. So I'm just fixing what my mistake right now. Git pull. Found one vulnerability, but hopefully git merge, uh, actually git checkout main. There's a purple stream frame maybe. Oh yeah. Yes, that is correct. I don't know how to edit this uh, when live. I know in OBS, but not this one.
what did you prefer to use for dev stuff mac or pc so um i've been given a mac for work which is perfectly fine uh however i do use linux quite a lot it depends also on the language and the framework you are using so um a lot of old .NET stuff is extremely hard to actually use on mac it's impossible to use on linux um however there's quite a lot of places that are moving to the newer versions of dotnet which uh, especially dotnet core which can be used on mac and linux really easily so there are times i have to run like parallel or something like that or a virtual machine of windows uh, to get stuff running um, i don't have a big preference but i do i do kind of lean heavily on linux but that's personal preference. Uh, if someone came to me, it was like, I prefer using Windows or I prefer using Mac uh, because I work faster. I'm not going to have a problem with that at all. At the end of the day, use the tools that you are familiar with. All right. I do not know how to edit this live. Um, my absolute dream job would be to be working on the beach full time or any other open source tools full time. So yeah, yeah, pretty much in the same field. I'm, I'm what's called a full stack developer. So I do stuff um, like I'll work with Azure, I'll work with AWS, I'll work with uh, virtual machines, I'll work with uh, the back end of the framework, I'll work with the um, front end uh, that will include CSS or any other JavaScript libraries. So yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, yeah. Uh, it's uh, sorry. I had to throw this together within like 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, these things happen. All right. We're going to pull the code, the changes, which I did, uh, the week before I've had a week off. I've had a holiday. So, um, yeah, I'm just getting back into the things. So I'm going to check out development 0.29.1 and I'm going to get merge main into it. All right, uh, we do have some conflicts, quite a few conflicts, but that is not too much of a problem. That will hopefully be all the static files. Static, 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 static. All right, so I'm, I'm checking this, this little bit here. I'm ignoring all the other files. That's perfectly fine because I can do npn run watch and it will override the static files. Um, you are saying a lot of acronyms. I'm just shaking my head, faking like I know. Ah, fair enough. Uh, what do you do on vacation? I just sat there and did pretty much nothing. It was glorious. Uh, not gonna lie, I hadn't had. I haven't done that in a long time. And hey, real late. How are you tonight? I hope you're going well. Hopefully, you aren't near the flooding. Uh yeah, I was in Thailand. So yeah, that was pretty horrific when we heard about that. And hello, uh, Iris, how are you? All right, uh, I do have my webcam up there. I'm so glad I plugged in that webcam because this actually gives me the ability to pick this up. So I don't actually have a web, ah, no. Where's my, I mean, I could use that. All right, sorry. Um. I'll make a new scene. What? All right. I'm terribly sorry. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, Iris, I will feed the cat. Uh, however, it's going to be super tiny. Uh, the reason being is I haven't set cat cam up on this computer yet. And hello, Aiden. 
Oh, really? Didn't it say anything? Oh. What are we paying that bot for? <laughs> um, uh, you're good messing with SSL certs and setting up Honeypot for my SSH. Ah, oh, fair enough. Have a look into fail to ban also. Um, so I tend to install fail to ban. Uh, what it does is it bans people if they SSH uh, too many times incorrectly. Yeah. All right, as for the cat cam, we'll get straight into that. I'm terribly sorry, it is gonna be tiny. Uh, I will get the cat treats right now. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, I just stood on it. Okay. Oh, sweetie, you're getting cat treats. She's underneath the green screen. Now nah, we'll get the green piece. All right. go hey there socks move my phone out of the way all right there we go there we go there we go all right i'll catch up on chat very quickly so eric 55 oh geez thank you um, the reason why Pretzels pops up uh, now playing is because I'm using the free version of Pretzels and uh, that is part of the um, part of the agreement is that that's going to pop up every every time a new song plays. <laughs> Boring Special K. Uh, uh, what was that for? Um... Oh, yep. All right. Now, oh, aren't you gonna? All right. All right. I am back. Um, you don't hear the music. Oh shoot. All right, let's see if I can put in another mixer. All right. Damn it. Desktop audio device. Oh, it says disable. Desktop audio only. Wait, you eat my biscuits? No, they're mine. Damn it, I am terribly sorry. Hmm, yes, like Spotify. It is DM, uh, yeah, what Aiden said. Um, are you using loop back? I'm probably not. Sorry, I'm so much used to, I prefer OBS, but uh, in this sort of case, I was like, oh, I'll give this a little uh, shot. All right, um, mic, audio, default, alert box. All right, uh, webcam. Damn. All right. Sorry, I'm running into so many issues uh, this evening. So yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough. Um. All right. Getting back into this. Sorry about this. I'm getting distracted like there's no tomorrow. 
All right. Mm -hmm. um, that's Streamlabs. Let's get out of that. So we want New Beach to look like this. Currently, it will look like this. Now, let's open up our local host. Ooh. All right, cool. Am I running Django? Sorry, I've been working on um, the Docker build of Near Beach. Uh, I think I got it running at the moment. Yeah, I've got it running at the moment. I'll just delete. I'll delete it completely. There's nothing exciting in that Docker thing. Um, so I haven't actually started running this. So I am going to go manage run server. Now, git, uh, sorry, uh, npn should be running. So that will compile our code. This local host should change to this one. Yep, there it go. So what we want is admin. All right, let's go to administration. Let's go to groups. Oops, sorry. So down here, we want to edit this section down here. Uh, so for the groups, we'll have group list. Actually, no, that's the wrong one. That's permission set. This is group. So we'll have user list user. It should be user uh, group list and user list user list. And then that will be the, oh yeah, and that'll be the lead, uh, the user, so team leader and read only, uh, their permission sets, and if they're a group leader for those permission sets. So, yeah. All right, let's uh, jump into my code. Oh no, more security. Oh no, yeah, I think I've known about this one. Oh, it's in view validate, and there hasn't been an update yet. That's annoying. I don't want to pull out the validate. I will if I have to. All right. So I can close this. Let's open up this. Let's add, add in a user here. So we'll add in a team leader with permission sets. So user can have multiple uh, permission sets added onto them. I don't know why that's refreshing. That's something we will have to look into. Um, the idea of uh, this is for it to not refresh. All right. So we'll have the user and then this will be literally just the permission list because it'll be in the same groups, always the same groups. And then, so that permission list will belong there. And then it will be group leader. if they're a group leader or not. So, yeah. All right, so first things first, let's find that component. So that component should be, um, it's called user list. So we'll close that, close that and open it back up again. I just wanted to compress everything. Uh, we've got components. We've got user, that's not it. User list, so here it is. And that's just the add user modal which you saw. So I'm just re reading this code, seeing where it's at again. I think we purposely do this just in case it gets stringified. Um, so sometimes, uh, for people who don't know um, JavaScript very well, uh, double equals is usually being like, does this equal this, but it's very sort of gray. Um, however, triple equal means, does it equal exactly this? So if I open up a new tab, one way which I remember this, so you can always just bang open up a tab. I'll zoom in, oh, I wanted to zoom in. 
hopefully you guys can read this. So if we got var a equals one and then var b equals a string one. So if a equals equals b, that's true. But if a did a dir, it'd be that's false. Because one's a string. Uh, so sometimes you need to use just the double instead of the triple because you don't know if it'll come out as a string or an integer. You can always pass back into an int. Yeah, I've been using Firefox um, for a long time. There was a little stint where I wasn't using it and then they built their quantum engine and then I went back for the quantum engine. You might need to zoom in a bit. Yeah, no, I couldn't zoom in on the console, which is annoying. Yeah, the dev tools are uh, really, really good nowadays. So, um, yeah, they spent quite a lot of time working on the dev tools. So let's get this all set up. So we've got add user functionality. So that will show the bundle. We've got the get list. So this will uh, cons filter user. This uh, user list results filter to row username equals username. So const mapped results equals new set filter all right i'll have to find out where i'm using this get list because uh, i'm not sure i know what it's doing here essentially we're filtering the uh whoa all right uh the user list results by just the username and then we're returning the um a set where we're mapping out the row of the field we want. And I think if memory serves me correctly, it gives us this, which we could potentially utilize. So we could still use that function. Uh, so yeah, it just sends back the maps results. Uh, get unique uh, list of users. This is a pretty fun one. So essentially what we do is we map and we just return back um, essentially just these users. And then we essentially loop through and just get the unique users. That There's that way to unique that. There's probably a better way to do it. Um, Java script distinct object array. We've got to be specific that it's an object array. There is a new way to do it. Okay, cool. Maybe a bit later. Uh, well, we are using the set data map. All right, cool. Let's copy this in. Let's paste it here. Let's set up everything like this. What we'll do is we'll refactor the top part. So it'll be like this. Because that will be a lot easier to look at than a lot of this see this is yeah doing quite a bit of stuff in there yes so uh apart from going on your coming back from holidays uh aiden you might actually be happy about this um i have started setting up the docker so currently at the moment, uh, near beach will not work. There is a few bugs, which I've got to fix out and stuff like that. It just requires me literally reading documentation and stuff like that. But I have been able to get, um, I've been able to start working on this. So I've been uh, setting up the Docker file and stuff like that. So yeah, at the moment it's not doing the migrations correctly yet. So that is something Yeah, yeah, so um, I've got to, once again, this is just me having to read the notes and stuff like that. I have to actually set this all up. 
Right here. All right. So, getting back to this code, and then it sends back a unique list of users. So essentially, we could potentially use something like this to make them unique. We do actually have a username, in which case we could potentially do that. And we are already using this um, ES2015 uh, um, sort of format up here. So we can potentially use it right down here too. And that's the, all right, will we mount it when we, when this component is mounted, it will get a, a unique list of users. All right. And it updates a unique list of users. Let's, let's straight off the bat, let's actually update this. So we'll have a const unique equals new set. Uh, now the data itself will actually be mapped results. Um, so what mapping does is, and hey, hey, Rich Coats Web, how are you today? Um, the holiday was great. I, I needed it. I did sweet F all. Um, didn't have a hangover on any of the days, which is great. Uh, essentially, I just relaxed. Uh, we saw some elephants. We went into a temple. Um, we got a lot of massages. We had lots of naps. <laughs> so yeah, it was a great holiday. Um, and I rarely looked at work. So yeah, I'm not complaining at all. Anyway, getting back to this map, uh, if you know about um, vector calculus and stuff like that, you might have an example where you've got um, coordinates in a 2D plane, which needs to be transferred to a 3D plane. A good example is you have a map and you need to transfer the coordinates on, from that map onto a sphere. So that's an easy, quick sort of a, um, thing for mapping. The same similar thing kind of in JavaScript is you can map data. So you can actually trans, uh, transform that data from one particular thing into another. In this sort of case, I'm just pulling out the fields that I need. And that's what I'm doing. But in reality, you could actually map this so you can have full name and you can connect uh, the last name and that name together and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I use map functionality quite a lot with D3 sort of graphs. I'm down to test it on my VPS because I've been playing it with uh, track ethics. Ah, fair enough. Uh, best holidays are the one you don't think of work, yes. Uh, last time I went to Thailand, I had work hanging over me. So it was nice going there this time and not have to think about work. Makes actually going to work today actually a lot better. I got a bit done today, which was good news for me. All right, so we got this set mapped results map. So we've got item, item. Uh, I like to use the word row. Uh, that's just personal preference. If you guys like to use it in a particular way, go ahead. And then we've got row dot username. All right, uh, get rid of that. And it is redundant. Yeah, I guess it is redundant. We can actually put that in one line now. So this is the good thing about new code, new coding, new code, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, is the idea is you get sometimes really complicated things which take up 20, 30 lines and you simplify it down to one. As you can see, I deleted, I don't know how many lines. Um, and it was great. I could potentially put all this into here, but we are then getting a bit too uh, messy. Uh, I'm trying to go for readable code. All right. Uh, 
Sorry, Aiden, I don't have my... Uh, I can't actually ban that user. Could you please do the honours? Uh, and thank you. Um... Aiden must be away from the computer. All right, give me two seconds. Sorry, guys. You get to see my stream manager. Oh, cheers. Thanks, Aiden. So I just assumed you ducked off right then. Um, cheers. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, I just assumed you, like, because it always happens to me. I, like, walk away from the computer and I come back and I sit down. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Delvoid, how are you today? I hope you're going well. All right, so let's uh, using uh, Java script set, we can create a uh, deduplicated set of data. Oh, I can't complain. I've just come back from a week of holiday. I'm in bliss. Uh, came back to work, spent probably an hour reading up on emails and stuff like that. And then pretty much just did all my work today. And then my uh, Linux box didn't want to turn on and I'm on my Mac at the moment. And yeah, I should actually do that. I'm terribly sorry. I keep forgetting to bump that over. Uh, all right, let's hit refresh. Okay, we've now got a problem with this page. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring out the view. Uh, I'm going to... All right. Micro K8's message on my v V8 when I don't have it installed. But then I remembered that I share my VPS now. Ah, uh, yes. The good old someone's installing stuff without telling you. All right, so we have a problem with this. So what we'll do, console, no errors. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Uh, unique list of users, array, oh, all right. So it's just come back as zero and then two. So it's just come back with the ID. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just gonna get rid of that and put row, row. Wait for it to compile. Now we've got two. All right, that's not working how I want it. What if I object fire it? Oh, oh yes, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, this functionality is not working how I want it to work. This is why we test. Um, we take. I like to take baby steps. So I do take a while to program, but the idea is so I don't break things, all right. Actually, at this particular point, this functionality is not working how I want it to. So I am just going back to the old functionality. And that should just work. That should give me one row. Gave me two rows. Why? Uh, did I let it compile enough? Can I long enough? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is very unstable. Um, yeah, because they, yeah, they had a massive drop. Oops, sorry. Let's wait. 
I'm also looking at the Bitcoin price. Well, I had a bump. Oof. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to put this as politically correct as possible. Um I'm not a fan of the war at all. Or most wars. In fact I can't think of a war that I am a fan of. However there is one war I will laugh at. Whoa, all right. <laughs> oh, hold your horses. Uh, let's do that. This is the only war I will laugh at and stuff like that. But yeah, I totally disagree with the war. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more than that. I'm not going to take sides uh, or indicate what side I'm on. So yeah. Yes, the emu war. Uh, I look away for five seconds and you're checking again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I haven't bought any Bitcoin, but I did buy one of the dog coins, um, the Shibu coin. Like, I put a hundred bucks in it. And this has been an ongoing joke, which I've been saying for years. I've, I've constantly said the instant I put any money into cryptocurrency, I'm going to cause it to crash. So I did that and it went from a hundred bucks all the way down to $20. So I caused the crash. Uh, so yeah, but yes, this is actually a true war that happened in Australia when we were a very young country and, um, yeah, it's, <sighs> it is an internet meme. Um, so yeah. Ooh. <sighs> Make sure everyone knows you lost. Yes. Yeah. We lost against a bunch of emus. Yeah. Uh, probably why the English sent us out <laughs> to be fodder in World War Two. So, yeah. All right, getting back to this. Try not to get political. They did send us out for fodder. Everything else before that. And yeah, and World War One was like that too. Um, all right, users, group list, permission list. All right, so we've got just the ones in there and stuff like that. Uh, all right, cool. So I'll be happy with this for the moment. I will hopefully find something where I can dedupe it so that it's unique for all of these. Um, that will just take time for me to figure that out. Or unique for what's there. All right. So now that we've done that, we'll have a look up here. So we've got users list, all right, P, uh, the following list of insert destination to add, yep, all right. So these will change depending on what we're looking at. They should have covered that in history class because <laughs> we've really actually focused. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Me too. Um, I do believe it should be covered because it is absolutely, it is one of the stupidest wars out there. Um, I, and I only know a little bit about it. It's... Yeah, people fucked up. <laughs> Massively. All right, so we've got user. We've got groups, groups list and we've got permission list. Now, and then we'll have uh, team leader. So at the moment, uh, we'll need to add code so the idea here is we'll have a little tick box um if they're a team leader it'll be ticked if not it yeah all right 
This will also change depending on who's, who's essentially, if this is a um, user or anything like that. So first off the bat, let's have a look down here. So we've got destination. So let's comment this out. Actually, let's undo that for the moment. Let's actually put the destination in. Let's see what value we get out for this particular one. Got to wait for it to compile. Group. All right. So what I want to do, P uh, V F destination equals group. And then uh, that should be class, not text. Like so. Bang that open. I like to do it like that. Um, oh, we might not need to do it as an if statement. Uh, the following are lists of users associated to, and then we just insert destination. Uh, to add a new user, please click on add user. Yeah, that's generic enough. I don't need an if statement. Sweet. All right. Um, so what we want to do is I believe we need... Okay. So... Don't show users when we're in users. Don't show group lists when we're in group lists and don't show permission lists when we're in permission lists. So, uh, v if not, uh, that should be destination not equals to uh, user. So it is pretty much similar to down here. So that would be group and that will be permission set. I do believe. We'll find that out in a few minutes, but that will be a, a quick and easy fix. So we need to do the same down here. Now, because that's getting a little bit too long, I will actually uh, put that on its own new line in a minute. So I'm just gonna bang that on a new line. because I'm reaching that sort of limit. I don't want my code to go off too far into the horizon. So, just done that. Oh, I could minimize this today. I don't need that open down there. And then we've got add code. I don't have that up. All right, group is still appearing there. Did I screw that up? That should be. That is the weirdest thing. Why does it need to be? Oh, this is... Okay, I, th I think that was just me not waiting for it to compile fully yet. All right, so these will hide uh, because we don't need them. When is at this point? Uh, so that shouldn't compile. So we've got the username. So we'll have the username here. We'll have the permission lists here, which is great. Uh, what I'll need to do is put this into a simple if statement. So let's do that right now. 
So span, it'll just be a simple span, uh, V if, and then it is permission set. Um, oh no, not V if, it'll be V4. Permission set in, and then what we do is we just copy this for the moment, paste it in here. That's a pretty long, long thing, but that's, that's, that should be fine. Uh, where key should be key equals permission set. Permission set name. And that should actually be in that. And then we should do something like this. That should actually not be in that. Okay, it compiled, but it's not going to render. <laughs> you declare this uh, the stream announcement bot is like, yeah, fair enough. Did it just happen? Everyone gets to see my uh, all my Discord things. Socks, you are moving closer and closer to the laptop. You just want to put your butt on the laptop, don't you? Did I get 7.30? Yeah, I think that was about 15 minutes. All right, so that didn't work. So I'm going to get rid of this for the moment. The system will be like ah, stop it but that's perfectly fine i just want to see if there's uh anything in there so we just got to wait for it to compile all right now we just got to add in a comma and what I'm also doing is, because you should be doing this, key equals permission set, because it's just, a, there's nothing inside it. It's just becoming permission set. All right. Um, let that compile. Where's my comma? Did... All right, let's make sure this is compiling. Yep. I was also playing with the activity thing on my cryptocurrency bot and I found out I could uh, set streamers to be in the playing X, Y, ah. That's kind of nifty. All right, that just took some time to compile. And that's, uh, this is <laughs> the one problem with Near Beach at the moment is that it's really large. Uh, it does take a while to compile at times. Okay, notice how that there's this last one. So what we wanna do is view JS um, for loop last or first. All right, so what they've done here, they've, uh, where's our for loop? Template, yada, props, yep. All right, view components, v4 index. So they've got item and then index. And then they've got something like this. All right.
All right. So I'm thinking of making it pick some random software and game dev streamer out of the list who is live. Okay. All right, that comes out rendered like that. That I assume that as much. Um, I don't think this will work. I think I'm gonna have to use an if statement. Thanks, thanks, sucks. Right. I don't know if this will work. If it works, I will explain it. But if it doesn't work, I won't explain anything. All right, it doesn't look like it did like that. Uh, module pass, unexpected token. Two errors, one warning. Yeah, it didn't compile. And then it compiled. All right. So that was just me having to wait for it to compile. We've got two there. And one at the end. We want to get rid of that and that. Okay, not doing what I want it to. And I keep forgetting what this is called. So I'm gonna loosen up the, the rules slightly. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm chewing through power. Yeah, okay, cool. So that didn't work how I wanted it to. Um, so in a few languages like PHP, um, no, no, I don't want that. Uh, I keep forgetting what it's called. It's like um, condition operator. Okay, yeah, it's condition operator. So the idea is, I was hoping this would work, is if this is true, hence the question mark, we would want to do this, else we would have to do this. Um, the idea is, instead of doing what I'm going to do next, which will have multiple lines, we just have the little bit of code that runs this. So uh, this is called conditional operator. Um, I know it is a thing in PHP. It's a thing in a couple of different languages. So I'm gonna see if uh, it is a thing. So uh, let answer equal prompt. Do you like uh, that? All right. Yep. Okay. These are just. Or question mark operator lets us. Oh, do I need a space? Oops. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? 
actually put index in. All right, so this actually might work. Thank you very much, Real8. I enjoy the rest of your day. I know you've just woken up and had breakfast. So yeah, enjoy your day. I am making silly mistakes and then opening up random YouTube videos. There we go. That's what we wanted to do. So yeah, instead of having a massive complicated if statement, we can just have this in to actually specify, hey, if it's the first one of the index, we are, we just want to show nothing. Otherwise, we'll show a, um, a comma with a space. And that way, we can do something like this without having too many if statements. Um, so that's meant to shorten code. Uh, it's still quite readable. Um, there are cases where I would not want to use it. So for example, when it's something as simple as this, go for it. If it's something that is a little bit more complicated, that needs a lot more effort, especially if you're nesting these inside each other, that's when you would use go back to the if statements. Because uh, this is essentially just compressing everything down into a smaller line. Uh, that doesn't always work with complicated things, but simple things like this works perfectly fine. Uh, in fact, we'll be copying most of this uh, for the other ones. So that permission set is done. And now what I want to do is go to get bootstrap. Um, we want to go into the docs. We want to input, input, ugh, input, uh, tick, uh, input. Nah, we want tick boxes. Checks and radios. So you want a sort of a check. So we'll just put the check in here. Sorry, my cat's tail is like flicking all over the keyboard and stuff like that. Uh, she wants more treats. All right. So we just put that in there. Type checkbox value ID flex. Um, we'll be adding on an uh, a on click type of scenario uh, and whether or not this should be you know, changed. So we'll be doing this little bit of section a little bit manual. So we've got a team leader and then that gets ticked and so forth like that. Now I don't like it how it's like that. So what I would want to actually do is element. We want to align items. No, not align. It would be um, text align centered so yeah all right i'm just doing that it's easier just doing it like that no nope. hadn't compiled in time don't chew my laptop thank you sweetie all right give me say hi to everyone He's like, hey, you're on green screen too. Oh, you're like, ah, nope. I'm like, no, come back. I love you socks. He's like, no. All right, cool. And then the idea is we'll make that um, ticked or not dependent on particular reasons why. And yes, hey, Aiden. Oh, are you saying hey to socks? She's now licking me. All right. Now, I'm a little worried about my power. <laughs> so just because to get the webcam working and the monitor working, I'm using up all the ports on my Mac. 
because I only have two. So I today I have just bought myself, this is a little going on a tangent, one of these, I think I bought this one. So I can have power, monitor, I'll have a, I can then put my um, laptop up on a stand and all that kind of stuff, so yeah. So I'm looking at the battery being like, okay, it's at 70%. At one particular point, I will have to cut stream off early just because it this was 100% before stream. Um, and my battery is sadly at 93% capacity nowadays. I'm like, uh oh. All right, so we've got this all rendered up perfectly fine. I like how it's like that. So what I want to actually do is I want to essentially do the same thing. So we'll figure out if this is meant to be ticked or not in a minute. Uh, we'll add in a little um, function to actually do that for us. So on the value, we'll do a V bind to the value. At the moment, we'll have it as true. And that should do. Uh, but we'll create a function to actually find out if that's ticked or not. It's uh, pretty easy to do. And then um, once it's true, I think the user just doesn't matter if it clicks on or off. Uh, all right, that didn't work. Is it true? One. Ticked. What is it? No, it would be checked, wouldn't it? Uh, all right, let's look this up. Just give me two seconds. Check box value uh, HTML ticked. Checked equals checked. All right. Yes, so I have been able to last, um, it was something ridiculously long. Um, I was able to easily last 80, uh, sorry, eight hours, and I was well over 50%. Um, however, I wasn't doing any video encoding or anything like that, uh, so that's where currently my power has been consumed like there's no tomorrow all right so uh yeah and then if it is unchecked it would be just wait i do like the new m1s there are some i don't want to say issues there are some due to it being a new architecture and stuff like that I'm having some problems actually uh, compiling .NET stuff. But other than that, they're being great. Uh, type checkbox. All right. And then if it's unchecked, it'll be like that. So we'll have a function for this that will define whether or not this particular person is I don't know if it's compiled. Yeah, 
Oh, which also reminds me, I've got to buy Parallel. I get to use my business card. Cool. Now we just wait for it to compile. It could take uh, up to two seconds. I don't know if that actually worked. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, however, being on the Mac, okay, that's true, and that worked. All right, cool. Uh, I'm just sorry. Um, whilst I've still got this fresh in my head, um, uh, vbind checked equals true or false depending on tick. Sorry, um, what was I saying? I'm finding actually typing and actually using uh, my Mac actually a lot better streaming wise. I'm not having those issues where I'm typing stuff and take it takes a couple of seconds to sort of, you know, type out. So, yeah. yeah, support will get better over time. .NET 6 will work perfectly fine. .NET 3.1, which is an LTS version, does not so um you have to use visual studio for dotnet 3.1 if you use another editor like um jetbrains uh, rivers rider it won't actually compile it on the um, mac with the um m1 tech uh, m1 architecture uh, the reason being is it doesn't, they, Microsoft doesn't actually have a uh, .NET version for it that works properly and all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, um, I have to use the Visual Studio, which Visual Studio for Windows is good. It is functional if for the Mac version, it is not. And sometimes it's easier to, to, you know, have Rider up and Visual Studio and just have Visual Studio running it. So, yeah, so .NET 6, it's, from what I've been hearing, there's a lot of improvements, a lot of um, sort of shortcut code added in. Uh, kind of like how this is a shortcut compared to the old if statements and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, however, that being said, this is just me stating what other people have stated. I'm learning it. So, yeah. I, I will admit I have missed uh, strongly typed languages. Not going to lie. Yeah, it depends what you want to do. So, yeah. I'm just hoping that um, Microsoft does put in a little bit more polish into some of their tools for other operating systems. It really needs it. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I will actually be implementing TypeScript at one particular point. I feel like I'm kind of leaning into that already by sort of declaring that, hey, these have got to be this type and stuff like that. So it's just, it will be a massive project due to how large the um, code base is. It's, it's something I would need to get help. Okay, so we've just done that input statement. I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to actually test this in multiple different places because there could be multiple users, uh, unit users. No, there, there wouldn't be. There's just one. All right. Let's actually add in that function. Okay, cool. Is team leader. And that will be a function where we've got user ID coming through. Uh, that might actually be username. Um, as an ID, just putting that comment in there. 
yeah, one step at a time. It, it's going to be one of those things where I want to, there's functionality and there is um, massive improvements I want to actually achieve first before putting in strongly typed sort of stuff. It's, yeah, it, it's a nice to have. It's not critical. Uh, when I have a little bit more time, just don't hit burnout. Yeah. Yeah, which is why also, I don't know if you saw this, Aiden, but the new, oh, and the cat's just having a play. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, the cats are making random noises. So the roadmap for 2020, 2022, I only go up to April so far. So the idea is I adjust this. Uh, so when I get up to April, I'll be like, okay, the next two months, I will be only doing this many tasks and stuff like that. So as you can see, start writing Docker setup. That is, well, that I've started it. I've now got to hopefully finish it and then update the administrator UI UX, which is what I'm doing right now. And I've got a bunch of other stuff too, which I wanted to, um, so yeah, implement a pipeline for the CDN, which is, I've been meaning to do for ages. So yeah, yeah. Burnout is, I've been there before, it is horrible stuff. I would not want to wish that on anyone. Okay, so we've done that, we've done that. All right, so we're doing this now. All right. So what we want to do is we want to filter unique list of users so we've got user list results so get all the data from users results where username and uh, all right this is where i actually have to look up fields themselves so i jump in here list of unique user email uh, sign of the debt oh we don't have team leader in there all right no not a problem we jump into here, we see if there is username, last name, username, user level, permission set, permission name, uh, permission set, no, we don't have it there either. All right, so we've got to pass down that variable. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Well, I'm hoping to get it up and running very shortly. So yeah, I, I'm, also open to help if anyone knows Docker and can help because there's a lot of things I need to actually learn. I need to be able to think about how am I going to pass down user variables. So for example, there are a bunch of variables which I need to pass down like database username and password, the, um, the website name and this and that, all sorts of fun stuff. So yeah. All right, so getting back to this, I need to actually pass this data down. So this data is, sorry for flicking back and forth. This is get unique list of uh, the list results I do believe this is a prop. This is actually, yep, this is actually grabbed from the rendering stuff. So this would be a part of views, administration views. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I've got to learn that. <laughs> so yeah, I'll keep an eye out for that. So the word ENV, and for environment. So yeah. Uh, and I've also got to think about how can I get it so that it works with Kubernetes. So if someone were to sign up for Near Beach, it can spin up their own instance and then Bob's their uncle. So, yeah. All right, sorry, I was just getting distracted. All right, okay, check for some login. All right, no, check, recapture, nope. 
Where's my structure? I'm just going to put my structure up here. All right, permission denied, login. All right, I've got the, uh, oh, that's authentication views. I don't want that. Admin views is what I wanted. Okay, add user, update user request. All right, not exactly what I want. That's perfectly fine. Let's have a look at projects. So group views. So this will be group information. So here's the user list results. So we are grabbing all of these. So now we just got to find the variable with the team leader stored in it. So what we wanted to do is let's duplicate tab. Let's type admin, hey Max. All right, let's go to group. Group missions. No, all right. User groups. And this is where we've got group leader. Wrong one. So we've got user game. This is after user group. So it should be part of user group. In theory, should be that. We'll find out very quickly. Okay, the reason why I had that problem was the um, Django was restarting the web server. So every time you make a change, it just automatically restarts it. It can take a couple of seconds. Group leader, false. All right, let's actually make that true. Save and continue editing. So one of these will be true. That one's false, that one's true. All right, so we've got the, the field we want. We now need to get a view to map it correctly. Um, in this sort of case, we don't need to map it into the unique list of users. No, we don't. Yeah, no, we don't. That would be useless information down that le down there. Uh, so, to, to, to obtain a, a unique list. No, get all the data from user list where the username and da da feels true. Okay, so what we want is const count equals get count of the data from that where did it all right cool and then this dot user list results dot filter and then we just do a simple row um, and then we return where row dot username equals uh, username and row dot not list user results, that should be um, group leader. Group 
group leader and group leader because that will return true. So we want the username equals username and row.group leader. Why are you complaining? Unexpected, unexpected variable group leader. Yeah, it's a thing now. All right, and then we just put in dot length here, and then you return um, if length is greater than zero. Uh, return true. So we just return if the count is greater than zero. Done. Um, keeping that extremely simple and easy. So going up here on this, we now need to do um, is team leader. Uh, we then need to pass through the user dot username and just to be consistent with how it's done in near beach we'll just do that eventually we'll probably change it to the dot case or whatever it's called um, this stems from just data analysis that's why I've picked it over the other case All right, that's auto. Oh, wait, that could have automatically been ticked. Just giving it. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick it here. I'm going to save and continue editing. Awesome. So that works automatically. Uh, so. I can get rid of that. All right. Now we do have to do a um, Vion. Update team leader. And what I wanna do I'm actually gonna leave it like that. Update team leader function event console log event. I'm gonna see if this will work if it sends through my event. Through. All right. Waiting X amount of time. Got my console open. Did do jack. All right. Uh, let's look that up. Vue.js on chain on uh, tick checkbox. No, I don't want to set it as. No, I want to. Oof, all right. All right, guys, uh, shoot. That change, all right. 
So that might not be a click, it might be a change. Okay, we wait for it to recompile. Sweet, so it does send something through uh, from here, temp zero dot checked, um, oh, target dot checked is false. If we change that again, um, this way we don't have to pass through multiple different variables or anything like that. This is just simple. Uh, checked is true. All right, this, this is what we want. All right, cool. So what we need to send to the back end, um, const Sorry, I'm just pooping stuff his nose. Okay, uh, d -d 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 team leader equals event dot target dot checked. Uh, so get if the uh, check box is ticked or not. All right. So and then we need to send to the back end. So what we um, to the back end. So what we want to do is there's two things we want to do. Oh, we might need we need the user ID. So username and event. So the username, oh, where am I? Down here. The username will be user username. Gotta close that off. All right, that, that should still work. All right, this is just for double testing. So what we have console log, Username will be username, and then we'll have event equal event. So that should take a couple of seconds to compile. So we tick this. Can't access target. Take a couple of seconds. It's probably, it hasn't fully compiled yet. That's why I'm still coming up with the same error. All right. There we go. Dot target dot checked false. All right. So going down here, let's untick this one. Let's go team leader. Let's go team leader. Let's go team leader. Let's save. Let's wait for it to compile. doing exactly what we want. Yeah, I'll have a couple. Are you gonna finish them too? Okay. There's three left. Shouldn't have told you. Should not have told you. 
Boom, I'm gonna have to walk the thing. Yeah, ASMR. Yep. Just sit here. I don't have my loud keyboard here, but. Mm. I should get another keyboard soon. One with Bluetooth, so I can actually Bluetooth it if I need to connect it to this this laptop. All right, uh, send to back end. So const data to send equals new form data. Uh, data to send, oops. Dot set. Um, group leader. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this to stop confusion. I'm going to update this to group leader. So uh, this should be group leader and then we have group leader data to send dot set username username all right oops sorry socks but your tail was in the way all right uh using axios oh do i have don't know if I got defined here. No, I don't. So import require Axios. Oh, I got that wrong. Ah, uh, it's, yep, yeah, all right, cool, yep. Yeah. So going back down here, we go Axios dot, we're doing it as a post. So currently we'll use the back to Liz. Um, we don't have a URL yet, a data to send. And then we really don't need to do anything else. We're sending the data into the back end. The back end will do stuff, but the front end doesn't really need to do anything. If someone unticks it and then retick it, you're just sending two results. Um, so yeah, if there's an error, we do want to send to, uh, do something about that. So in here. This is where I'm going to put it in the admins view. Um, so. We definitely need that. We definitely need, we need a permissions uh, thing in here. All right, so I've got a decorator for doing some of this stuff and I'm just trying to find it. So check user permission. So the user permission should be on a, mm, it, I 
am going to just comment these out for a second. So, this group information. Oh, we don't have admin restrictions on this yet. Oh. I mean, if someone knew the uh, location, I could easily get into this. Oh, I don't need that anymore. All right. And I don't have admin decorators yet. All right. So we need a post, we need the update user group leader status, tells us what we want, request. All right, so we don't have any real params, request, uh, normal stuff. All right, cool. So what we want to do is uh, get the form. Oh, I should really not do that. Um, so method, method. Actually, let's just quick, quick one. Um, this function will update the users uh, group leader status against a particular group. Oh, that's what else I need. It isn't every single group. It's just that one particular group too. Oh, this makes this a bit harder now. Sorry, I'm literally just thinking about how I would do this. Because this is one component that services both the group list and the permission sets, which are going to be one to many type of scenarios, or many to many, I should say. So, yeah. I want to kind of make sure I'm doing this correctly. So, uh, let's lift your dick users. So, if it's a certain case. So if it's permission sets, we are focusing, if the destination is permission sets, we will filter out all the permission sets. If the destination is groups, we'll have to filter out the groups. Cause in those sorts of cases, if it's, if the destination is group, the group will, should be unique. Uh, because we're only looking at one group permission set. If it's a permission set, it will be the permission sets will um, filter out. So this is a group leader. I'm going to put, um, yeah, no, no, it'll, it'll be like that. Um, if the destination is permission sets, want to get the current permission set status 
if the destination is groups, we want to get the current group status. All right. Now, I don't know if that's add code. Deal with group first. Data to send set group. What we want to do. So the creators of Ubuntu is making micro K8s and it works on pies. Ooh. Ooh, all right. No, I can't select that. Ooh, I better look at my oh. Probably only have oh, I've got one hour left anyway. Um, yeah, I'll accept. Nice. I am probably going to give this a shot. Because, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how fast I can deploy Near Beach on uh, my Raspberry Pi. Aiden, I do believe you were there when we were um, trying to, you know, deploy Near Beach on a Raspberry Pi 1, my original Raspberry Pi, which is somewhere behind me. Right in front of me. There it is. There's the little beast. And uh, we got up to the, um, essentially the migration of the database and it took so long it wasn't funny. So I wonder, because I do want to actually try installing it again on my Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, good morning, Matty Two Shoes. How are you? So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much faster it is. Oh, and Coppinger, thank you very much for the raid today. How was your stream? Were you going on, because, what happened? Uh, I know um, Sam Griffin raided you at one point. Have you been going on since then? Kubernetes. Uh, I've just had a quick look at the Kubernetes and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm actually doing uh, more near beach stuff. So a lot of doing this. So yeah. Um, and this should be, oh, this should. I should be get, I should be able to get a unique list. that all right um give me two seconds i'll um do the spiel i'll do a shout out also <laughs> fair enough 10 hours damn so yeah <laughs> all right du -du -du. oh you did shout out sorry aiden i didn't see that that's my bad. Um, I'm reading from the bottom up. Do, do, do. Um, all right, cool. Anyway, uh, so what I'm working on today is still Near Beach. So Near Beach is an open source project management system. 
uh, essentially we are redesigning this. It's coming along really well. So the idea is we want this team leader functionality in it because it's core functionality for certain parts of the system. So, um, yeah, essentially that's what I'm doing today. So the front end is built in Vue.js. Uh, the back end is built in Django. I've just made them talk to each other very well. Uh, currently, Django is a hybrid, so it does do partial template rendering. However, in the near future, I am going to be moving that uh, more to a single page application, take all the major views um, that you know, like a new project, new task and all that, and move that into essentially just Vue.js. So the idea is when someone actually loads up Mew Beach, um, it's fast. That's the idea. Uh, the good news was when I went on holidays, I was able to test Mew Beach with really slow internet and I was I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I wanted. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, that's a bad example, but sometimes you can actually see it download a bunch of different components. So yeah, it's coming along very well. So this is the new Figma design. We do have it looking like that in Figma, but I'm not gonna... A tick box is fine. This tick box is perfectly fine. <laughs> I don't need anything more complicated. So what we're doing right now is I've just got to make sure that this sends data back. Uh, argument type any is not assigned to parameters string blob. All right, so what we need is we will know that, uh, so we'll have let group data equal this and we know that it comes back as an array and there will definitely be one in there okay else if destination equals uh, that will be permission sets I've got to double check if that's going to be correct. Just double check that. What I do, administration, permission sets. So the good thing about uh, modern frameworks and stuff like that, uh, you could do this with uh, jQuery and so, and so forth. Uh, but it took a little bit more. Is this component here should be rendering like the other. Oh, no, no. I just haven't done the group lists. Um, this component down here is the same component that is over here. So it's just used in multiple places. So the idea is to kind of program it so that A, it's still readable uh, as a sort of template or component, and B, it can be used in multiple places. So that way the code is a lot smaller. Uh, so this is permission underscore set. So we need to get rid of that. Uh, we need to get rid of that. And we need to get rid of that. All right, cool. So we'll fix up this in a minute. But I'm just needed to make sure that I've got that right. And then I'll get this if statement out the door. And we can start testing. Let permission set equal this dot get list uh, user would be oh we don't have the um, in this sort of case we would just simplify that down to username because we actually push this data in and then oh what's the what's this one uh, this one would be permission set so it's that long long one. We just push that in like so. We just carry that off. And then the data to send. So this is the data we are sending to the back end. We set. Uh, this will be permission set as the permission set. Like so. And we need it to be the first one in the array. Uh, mainly because it will be 
only one in there because when the destination is let's say a permission set one of the permission sets there's only going to be one permission set in this list all right i'm just trying to think lots of data at the moment in my head all right so we got the group and there'll be multiple if we've got a group so we've got a user in a group they can have multiple permission sets so if we're just doing that all those permission sets will have to actually be upgrade yeah okay cool i'm getting this right okay data to send we've got to figure out where we want to send it so in near beach uh so we'll have the um urls so we'll have not dashboard admin add all right so we'll have a simple path admin update user group leader status that is a long url Oof. um that will be admin views dot update user group leader status i am actually going to update this over here and actually have it like that And the name is going to be the same. All right. Cool. All right. And I'm just going to do that. Eventually, I will need in this whole entire URLs file. It's probably going to be made up of multiple different um, smaller files eventually. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, I've got to figure out how I would do that with the smaller files. Oh, it's way too late to call me. All right, let's paste that in there. Let's make sure that we end it here. Let's also make sure that we've got the URLs. Uh, I like a forward slash at the end, yep. Uh, like so. All right, and then in here, we are just gonna return a blank HTTP response, nothing too exciting. Um, all right, you know, why is that? Why is that give me green lines? Huh? Give me blank lines, I know that. All right, so. Get the form so this will be form we actually haven't created any form yet so let's do that right now so we need to go into the django forms this is also another really large um file currently it sits at Ooh, I'm at 45%. Okay. Oh, no, it's not too large nowadays. It's only 800. It's not as large as my 10,000 line of code. So what we want to do is... Um, let's go update group leader status form. View for there. And I feel like I'm going to simplify some stuff too. Class update group leader status form. Uh, this will be just simple um, forms dot model. Ah, uh, no, not even. A... Could be.
that uh, can go a lion file be gone on holidays. Yes. Yes, the good old... Oh, I'm going to have to open it up. The good old old um, 0 0.26 near each. It's right there. For those who don't know, uh, essentially this was going. This was actually the first beta version of Near Beach. I made a massive mistake. One of those massive mistakes was I never actually got feedback early on. I, whenever you're programming, always get feedback early on. Get people just to look, look at it, uh, test test your theories about your code and all that kind of stuff. I did not do that. Um, and essentially, I did quite a lot of bad habits. So yeah, this is this is one of the reasons why I deleted ninety five percent of my code and started Near Beach from scratch. But also remember, this was this project started out as a learning tool um, because I learned by doing. And yeah, I wrote ten thousand lines of code and had all this random stuff which i am so glad it is no longer uh, necessary a lot of this is just handled in a lot better uh fashion because i learned how to do it properly all right uh let's all right basic meta data class oh. meta all right cool uh, model equals this would be uh, user group and build uh, username undefined I okay cool I will define that in a second just lost it all right bang that there I should do that for you guys so I'm going to double check the fields to do that, I just jump into the back end. Uh, so this is user group. So let's, ooh, can't do Jack because of that. Okay, so we need username, yep. We need group, permission set. And group leader. All right. All right. And those are all the fields I need. I do need to actually specify that group leader and permission set are optional. So I need to specify that now. Um, so um, group equals this will be a model multiple choice field required equals false. Uh, we need do we need a query set for this? Yes, we need a query set where the query set will be group objects for all. All right. And the same with the permission set. So we will have this as forms dot uh, multiple choice field because there will be multiple in here. Uh, required equals false uh, and then query set set equals permission set dot objects dot all all right and hey that noob how are you 
Is the border through your face by design? Um, okay. So, uh, sadly, my streaming box decided to die again. Which is not a good sign at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm on my Mac at the moment. And I didn't notice these... Um, these... Well, I didn't notice the border or I didn't notice the Streamlabs icon uh, before I started streaming. And now that I am streaming, uh, it is, I don't know how to edit it. It's, it's different to OBS and I'm like, I don't want to accidentally break something whilst I'm streaming. So yeah. And oh uh, no, uh, I'm sorry about your neck pain. That, that's, excuse, pardon my words. I, this I was almost about to say this and unintentionally without um, without you know the pun related but um, that is a pain in the neck um, I do hope you get better soon though excuse my pun that was unintended that is a probably a very bad pun to say at the moment <laughs> yeah I literally almost walked into it and then my brain was like, wait a minute, wait back, back up, back up. You, you can't just say that. So yeah, I do I do hope you um get help with it soon. So yeah. I'm sorry that you're going through that pain. So it is not fun. Um alright. Keep back onto track. We'll need this. We'll need this. We might need destination, but we can pass that through with the URL. So what we can do up here is we can do a, uh, I think a string. Uh, let's just put a destination. Like so. And then we really want to change this. This is a really ugly... So, uh, last two days were crazy. So my full weekend with that, yeah. Got eight minutes before I have a meeting again. Ah, oh, fair enough. I'll see what I can do in eight minutes. So let's uh, let's start the clock. <laughs> so update group leaders now. I want to change that name to update group leader status. So I'm just. Uh, just quickly going to go form equals this uh, dot. I just fill it with request dot post if memory serves me correctly. I do need to pull it from up here. Double check that. Yeah, just I uh, just fill it in like that. Okay, that goes away. I'm going to update this to update group leader status like so um this will change its location here to the update section the pqrs tuv all right this actually goes here this is the exception. The password stuff just goes at the bottom, but it'll be moved back up stairs later. All right, so this is right down here. That is fine. I don't need that there. That's complaining because too much space. All right. Oh, thank you, great, yep. Now this is no longer in alphabetical order. We do have to have two spaces in between that and that. All right, so here, if not form is valid, we return bad response and we got form.errors to send back. All right, from here, now this depends on the destination. I did do that right, destination. Yep. 
All right. Um, okay. So uh, start filtering the group, the user group by username. Now, I'm just double checking all my data first. So we've got username group. So we need to filter by username. These two are like that. And then the group leader is what we set it to. Going into here, we want to update this. So we want to have that like that. And then we want to add in the this.destination. Where did the name New Beach come from? <laughs> actually, uh, that name is actually right on the, the mark. Um, I used to live really close to the beach and I was thinking of a name. I was like, well, New Beach. And then a bunch of people at my old work were like, that's actually a really nice name. So it just stuck. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was near the beach when that happened. Oh yeah, no, no problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense. So yeah, I'm not the best with naming things sometimes, but when I can name something really well, it's like a top tier name. Oh, and thank you very much uh, for subscribing. I don't know what if the alert came out or not. Anyway, um, all the money I, I get for streaming and Patreon and stuff like that goes back into Near Beach. Uh, it covers the overhead of running Near Beach. And then hopefully down the track, I can actually hire uh, some people. Usually it'd be freelancing at first, of course, uh, to actually help improve stuff like the UX and UI and so forth. So yeah, thank you very much for the subscription. Um, the Coppinger, sorry, I nearly, I need to breathe. Um, no sound alert. Yeah. So, um, I, if, if my machine keeps not working, I'm going to have to actually switch to this, this Mac for the stream machine for a little while until I upgrade my computer. So I'll have to actually fix, um, the reason why it's not picking up any of the music and, and sound alerts and stuff like that. So, yeah. And then I'll have to transport um, Meanbox onto this computer too. So, yeah. Because currently on, yeah, the GIFs should be showing. So, and if you type in like, ah, uh, or something like that, a little picture of Socks and Max and a little, ah, uh, noise will happen. But sadly, that's on my other machine. And um, yeah, I just had technical issues today. So, yeah. The, the machine is really old, to say at the least. It is something that I am looking at upgrading this year. So I built the old machine when The Witcher 3 was just about to come out. And I realize I'm at 37%. Ooh, I've got to finish up soon. Um, that went from 50 to 37 pretty quickly. So I built the computer seven years ago which is also approximately how long my last computer lasted for. So yeah, uh, I have to talk to my accountant first. Building PC stream, <laughs> yeah, I've had, actually that, that might be an idea. Uh, I do have the green screen now, so ooh, just wait. Uh, oh, 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 look at that magic. Oh, there's a chair. So um, I reckon I, we could easily do a uh, PC stream. I need to get the mobile phone uh, one. I know you can connect your mobile phone up to the stream and actually record using your mobile phone too. But that will be fun. I'll get my friend involved. Uh, he built. He helped me build my last PC, this, the stream box here. So it's lasted seven years, so I am not complaining. I spent, I think, 1500 to 1700 on it for seven years. That's pretty good. But yeah, the next machine will be a lot beefier. Um, I have to talk to the accountant and be like, I want to be able to run VMs and this and that and stuff like that, all work related. 
Like, this is... What would I do? I'm hoping my PC lasts for seven years. Yeah. I mean, I, this, I'm not complaining about my um, old PC. It's just... It's at that point where it's essentially just crashing now. Which is sad. I'm going to see how long I can keep it running for, though. Because I need to save up the money. Um, I'm adding bits to my PC as I see expect. Yeah. I would have updated, upgraded my graphics card about two years ago if... Um, yeah, if crypto didn't make graphics cards really super expensive and the chip shortage and all that kind of stuff all right going back into here so that should now lead there start filtering the user groups by the username so what we want is user group update equals user group dot objects dot filter what we want to do is we want to filter is deleted equals false uh, we want the username equals the form dot cleaned data and then username oh nice yeah I think I will be I asked my friend to send me that computer building site and he never did. I'll, I'll annoy him again. All right, computer system, set to, con uh, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Computer parts, RAM. Okay, desktop RAM. I am thinking memory size. <laughs> I will start at 32. Uh, let's go high to low. Let's ignore all the thousand dollar ones. But yeah, I could could easily justify five hundred dollars for thirty two gig. Um I could justify sixty four for five hundred and sixty nine dollars easily. And for the six seventy, uh that's probably on the edge with the sixty but yeah. Uh, PC part picker. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, I do want the um, thread rippers. <laughs> Let's go high to low. But there is. So this is 32 core. And then this is the thread ripper. And I'm like, ooh, two grand though. So it's kind of like, mm, it's a lot of money, a lot of money, um, where I can get 16 cores, 32 threads for a lot cheaper. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I've just got to make sure all the parts are compatible. But yes, VMs, yes. So the idea is due to my current position, I want to be able to spin up VMs. I want to be able to essentially do machine learning on this thing. I want to be able to do, uh, essentially set up a Kubernetes dev environment and all that kind of stuff. So I've got plans. So a lot of the, I'm actually saving this over here. A lot of my new computer, once again, I've got to talk to my accountant, will be pretty much mostly work-related stuff. Um, I don't know about that. If it's GPU, ah, even the natural learning, uh, natural word learning or whatever it's called. Natural language processing. Because, yeah, this is what I will be doing for work, mostly.
So yeah, this is what I'm currently also studying. All right. Now, getting back to this quickly before I forget, because I'm just realizing I'm at 35%. I'll probably finish up within about 10 minutes just because I get really anxious when my battery just suddenly... <laughs> so yeah. Um, all right. Going with this form valid, it just, we're just making sure we're filtering for that particular user. And then depending on the destination, if it's a group or permission set, depends what we filter on. So uh, depending on the destination, depends what else we filter on. And then what we do is if uh, destination equals, and then let's do group, we want And then we do a filter, uh, we filter the group. Oh, this is actually a really good question. What is that field name? All right, uh, you, oh wait, I've got it right here. Uh, it's just called group equals form dot cleaned data and then that will be group all right dot and then there should be an update value okay um hugello 69 what you would want to do I don't know if you guys heard that, but one of the windows has been shut right now and it sounds kind of like the sack of ee, 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 ee. Um, What you want to do is, depending on your language, if this is Python or JavaScript, I'm going to assume it's JavaScript. What I can do is, uh, let's say you've got var a equals Bob. Uh, that's bib. Uh, I know you can't see this. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, hello. So you got an array like this. What you can do with an array is use a filter. Like so. I don't know how I can zoom in on this little. Oh, wait, there you go. So you can do a filter where you go return where something like road. Um, uh, I'm going to have to look up JavaScript. String contains... So use a dot includes, all right? So yeah. Return row dot includes, uh, then you would have your, let's say A's. So as you can see down here, it returns just that. Uh, and then uh, what was the, So you would want var b equals that. And then what you do, b dot for each, once again, do a row type of thing, console log b. Ta-da. So yeah, that's kind of what you have to do. So you just filter every, so what you want to do is you want to apply a filter. Inside that, whilst you're applying a filter, make sure that those particular letters, strings, or whatever are included. If they are, put them in the thing. So yeah. Uh, in Python, oh, good question. So what you would want to do is similar to that. Um, a cheat sort of way, you would just uh, Python filter lists. Oh, I think you do it through Lambda. So, hey, uh, freaking thing. So, for example, if you got something like this, you would apply a filter kind of like this. So, for n, uh, n for n in medical charges, if n doesn't equal none. So, in this sort of case, you would have a thing in there where you, uh, Python string contains.
so if apples in and so forth like that so that will be slotted in here so if um let's say apples in n instead of this n it does not equal none and um, that's how you would get the list so if i do this pretty quickly uh let's uh just do this here so let's so um let's put in apple orange um pink for one of digit people uh, so what we're doing here, medical cha uh, changes, this is literally just a loop. This is a very short and condensed loop. So N for N in medical charges, if let's say the letter A in uh, med, uh, A and N. And that should work. I will test that out for you right now. So that should be just these two lines. And then you just print it off out. You can let's actually do this as a test one. Let's let's go Bob equals. Yeah, I know I have double equals. It's a rookie mistake. And there you go, you got orange. Oh, oh. oh because um, lowercase a is treated differently to capital A, which is why Apple didn't appear. So in these particular cases, what you would do is you would lower that string. So Python uh, lower string, which you just look these things up whenever you come across it uh lower all right cool so you go n dot lower and that as a function let's rerun that so bob equals that and bob will now have apple in there and the reason why i did that n lower is it gets the input variables down to that lower variable and you can do it that way and then to print it out is just simple print f or print statement. Uh, you can even loop through it if you need to do anything fancy. So yeah, uh, with these problems, you always break them down into the smallest components. Uh, and as you see, it, I just Googled. Okay. You would use the lower method on it. Yeah, yep, yeah, cheers Hayden. You're on the ball. Um, and yeah, feel free to join our Discord where we can answer these questions. All right, how's my battery? 30%. I am going to be ending in about a couple of minutes. So if destination is group, we want to filter. I need to actually quickly jump into here, talking about thing, forgetting things. Django update um, objects. Oh, uh, no. Um, Django ORM update. Okay. Uh, I'm double checking it. I am about fifty percent sure that it's uh, dot update, and then you key in the what you want. So a album title. All right, that's creating retrieving objects, uh, modifying existing objects. Objects get primary key, and that that's a primary key though. Um, we're actually using a filter and no, uh, we don't want delete. Date multiple objects. I'm pretty sure it's a dot update and that's okay. Uh, Hugh yellow 69. So yeah. I do hope you are enjoying my content. As you, as you can see, as a senior, I still, yeah, it is update. I do 
Google quite a bit. Just because you've got so much to know, you kind of know the, how to do it, but the sort of exact commands is sometimes just have to look up and be like, oh, yep, that's how you do the filter in this language. That's how you do it in that one and so forth like that. I just know way too many languages. So we want to update and then we do it like this. So we want to update the, uh, oh, wait, what was it talking about forgetting stuff? Uh, it is group leader. Leader with the form dot cleaned data and then the group leader in there. All right. Oh, that doesn't like it how it's like that. All right, so that should do that functionality. So I then need an else if uh, destination equals, and then we've got permission set. So that's gonna be pretty much the same thing, except instead of groups, we've got permission set. So permission set and permission set. And then we just return happy face. Yeah, Google is your friend or DuckDuckGo if you don't like Google. Uh, so yeah, trust me, a lot of senior devs, they're like, especially when they know multiple different languages and stuff like that, the, the confusion between each language, sometimes it's just easier to Google it and be like, oh yeah, that's, that's it and stuff like that. So especially like, for example, I, I use filter quite a lot in JavaScript, not off by heart. <laughs> Python, not really. Um, there is a particular, I wonder if I still got it. No, I don't. So the reason why it was in those square brackets and in that sort of for loop within those square brackets, there's a reason why Python prefers you doing it that way. And it's because it can optimize it better uh, than doing it in a for loop. But you can actually do that particular thing in a for loop uh, also. Uh, I do sometimes prefer using these little coding shortcuts though. And I should also point out if you're interested, there's a free code camp. And on free code camp, there are courses for Python. And it's all free. You can sign up using uh, your GitHub if you wanted to. I haven't signed in, uh, but yeah, you can just, I think sign in's optional. Oh no, no, you have to sign in. Bear with me, sorry about that. It is, it is something you gotta use. Uh, no, I don't wanna, sorry. Uh, so scientific computing, so you've got a bunch of different sort of things in here. So uh, you should be able to filter. Oh, there's Python uh, working with lists. So yeah, you can do that. Uh, which method is used to add an item at the end of a list? Oh God, this is okay. Append, uh, it's push in JavaScript. There you go, append. Yeah. So you get confused when you have so many different languages rattling off in your head. All right, let's quickly test this. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's because they're not running the server. Is it sending data? All right. Just doing a simple console log got here. That should be response. Mm, 
Yeah, Manila's trying to get in. Just. Yeah, Yakov's coming. Uh, also, if you use certain languages, often you'll start uh, to pick up and remember some of the uh, methods you can add to strings, etc. Yeah. Uh, not a fire alarm, just our front door. All right. I am uh, console. Oh, uh, destination is not defined. You can hide behind the green screen. They can't see you. Uh, they might see you uh, out that corner though. Did I type this in wrong? Uh, they can see your blue. <laughs> Actually, will they see your blue? I don't think I set it to a color. Did you want to test your? Sure. Right, just right. Oh wait, your blue does come through. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. All right. It's only on green screen. All right. This is a bit weird. Why this destination is not coming through? Did I spell these wrong? Ah, uh, this dot destination needs to be here. All right, because we're in an object. Yes, some places have overly sensitive fire alarms. Like the university I used to work at, where dust would blow in from the car park and set off the fire alarm. Also, there was the uh, the Friday five o'clock problems, where someone would light up a joint at the top of a stairwell in this particular building and walk all the way down it and accidentally set off the fire alarm sometimes. Definitely not every educational place. However, that being said, when I was involved in a real um, fire at this university, uh, so one of their plants, um, you know, the electrical sort of thing, it's in a plant room and stuff like that, had an electrical fire. And smoke was going everywhere and stuff like that. Everyone who was totally used to a fire was just casually walking out of the building and stuff like that. It, it worked really well because they had so many freaking fire alarms go off. People knew what to do. So yeah, in a good way, it worked. Anyway, uh, failed with the status code 500. So we are going to quickly look at this code and then I'm probably 26% and then I'm going to find someone to raid because I am running out of battery power very, very quickly. All right, the response, I'm sorry, you guys can't see it. Cannot assign query set, user permission set, must be a permission set instance. All right, cool. What that means is, if I actually clean up this code, I can get rid of this. Uh, in the around here it is not liking this here so i've got to turn this back into an instant uh, into a um instance cannot assign query set yeah all right cool that is a uh, tomorrow problem because i am running out of power And pretty quickly too. All right. Just because there are a few people on at the moment, we will raid uh, the, that's not coming through. Kibatsky. Oh. Kibaskyle. I don't know how to pronounce that name correctly. I'm terribly sorry. But yeah, let's rate them. So they are working on a game. I do believe they've published a couple. In fact, I think, I, yeah, they have. Um, so yeah, let's uh, raid. Anyway, I've got to just wait, just wait. Yes, it works. 
It, yeah, it does work. <laughs> now what are you doing? I'm gone. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's hit raid. Are you trying to... What are you trying to do? Ah. <laughs> Thank you. 